We have Jason on the agenda this morning so we can get a little bit better of a description of his budget request. Um, and there might be a few questions, and Jason might have a few concerns that he might want to go over as well. So, Jason, if you want to take the floor. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, thanks for letting me come back and kind of discuss a few things. Um, I know I'd like to do a little goofy this year with, with some changes and in a tough budget year. I just kind of wanted to make sure um, we were all on the same page with what I was asking and uh, for Cap Life 25. Uh, I know some motions were made last Monday and passed, and I just want to kind of 
discuss a few, you know, there was two main issues with my budget um, that we were kind of discussing. Uh, basically, when we did my my budget review the first time, uh, my budget had the two columns, one for requested is what I was requesting, and then just the preliminary column. Um, the two major changes or differences between those two columns were um, obviously my requesting column was I had two salary adjustments figured in and also adding an employee, a part technician position to our maintenance staff. So those were the two um, major difference, differences between my requested column and the preliminary column. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to review how those numbers are impacting uh, my budget. And just so kind of everybody's on the same page with those numbers as you guys prepare the total time budget. Uh, so the first change was the salary adjustments. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time kind of looking at all my staff positions uh, to keep them comparable with other counties our size, uh, our staffing, our budget, that kind of thing. Um, our county conservation system does a statewide salary survey every year. Um, looks something like this. That's this is the summary of it, but it's a huge spreadsheet of every position in the county conservation board system across the state. Um, so I can look at every county what they're paying. So what I do, I have 37 counties I use that are similar in population size to Carroll County. Uh, similar in annual budget, similar in staffing structure, because obviously that's important in their positions. So what I do is I look at um, all the comparable positions every year, and I gave you kind of a list last time of all all of our different positions, um, kind of where everybody falls. But I, you know, my justification for doing that every year is. Um, basically to stay competitive or at least in the ballpark with what other counties are paying because when we go to hire an employee um, you know you want to have a decent a salary starting salary for those positions and you know i know i do our budget um, you know, our director position obviously is one of those to consider as well because um, i'm not going to be here forever so my board at some point is going to have to replace me um, I just want to make that clear. It's you know, it's not me just trying to inflate a number. It's, it's based on um, research, what other counties are paying, um, and just keep my all of my positions somewhat competitive uh, with similar positions across the state. Like I said, the main reason is um, you know when we have to go to try to. Refill a position if somebody quits, we need to be somewhat competitive uh, in the job market. Just for an example, we've got in the state right now, there's three conservation board director positions open. They can't find quality, qualified applicants to fill them. Uh, Warren, Emmett, and Iowa County all have director positions open that they're trying to fill right now. Uh, so, uh, so that's kind of my justification for the, the salary adjustments. Um, and as you guys know, my priority is always to my staff, to my staffing uh, salaries uh, ahead of my own. Uh, and I know you guys voted against any salary adjustments in that part 25, so if that doesn't impact my, if we have to do a 3.2% across the board, um, mainly these adjustments for the most part in time reach to the largest extent. Uh, if you want to leave the park ranger one in there, uh, that's not a huge number. So uh, I would be fine with that. But you know, my priority, like I said, in our previous budget meeting was to add an employee to my staff. So uh, if, the, if the salary adjustments don't work, so be it, we can revisit that uh, next fiscal year, whatever. Like I said, that mostly impacted my position anyway. So, like I said, my my biggest thing was to get an employee added. Um, so I'm gonna pass these around. And kind of state that around. Um, so on the front, 
and I'll go through these numbers. I just want to, this is kind of what I wanted to, to really discuss with everybody was how this was going to look. But I didn't want to go through my whole budget again because basically my my two columns, the requested column and the preliminary column are basically the same with the exception of these issues that I put on here. So uh, on the front is FY25 as I presented previously to this board. Um, so I have the requested column and then halfway down the page in the preliminary column. So the requested column, again, was the two salary adjustments, adding the Bart Tech position, then we will remove three seasonal interns and one seasonal mowing position, and then we would move a truck that we had we we're going to budget for in FY25. We would move that to FY26, uh, and basically, my my goal, knowing it was going to be a tough budget year, was to make adding an employee as budget friendly, budget neutral as possible. Um, I know that's never an easy task. But um, so basically what we were looking at is to add an employee, um, the salary, like diapers and insurance. Obviously, the insurance is a wild card. Figured in a simple plan. So what we're paying, we're probably going to be a, um, a new college grad or something, you know, a younger person. Uh, I'm thinking a single plan is probably realistic. Um, and then the salary adjustments. And those salary adjustments are not that amount on top of 3.2%. That's just the percentage. Uh, and then what we're removing, seasonal staffing will save about 31,000 this, this fiscal year. Um, and then removing the truck figures at about 30,000. So basically figuring all that together, that's a positive of 719 dollars. The preliminary column is basically the, the exact opposite. Uh, we're just figuring 3.2% across the board. No employee add, keeping all of our seasonal staffing we currently have, and keeping the truck and our equipment line uh, as, as planned. Um, so basically, that's just the opposite. So, what I want to point out is at the bottom, so my retusted column, and this is just strictly general basics, it's not figuring in REIT or any capital accounts, but just since this is all general basic items. Um, my, my deficit line on my requested column is 891.946. My uh, on the preliminary column, my general basic deficit line would be 891.785. So my requested column, uh, really, if we can hold it, these numbers would be $161 more than my preliminary line. Uh, so looking, I know there was some talk last year, the last meeting about um, you know, how to move in the truck the next year and the equipment budget and looking at future budget years of adding an employee. Um, we had my equipment budget this current fiscal year, between that was 25, bumped up. This year we bought a dump truck. Um, and then next fiscal year, FY25, we had to pick up a skateboarder and a forestry mower in there. So we had two years of some higher. Um, expenditures out of the equipment. Um, reality is usually my equipment budget sits around eighty to eighty five thousand. So looking forward at having an extra employee, um, the the seasonal staffing number is going to be out. We will not hire the seasonal staffing, so that number will be out of future budgets. And in reality, um, if my equipment budget in a normal year. Was around eighty to eighty-five thousand. You know that's you know, that's going to be down from that hundred and fifteen thousand we're going to have this year as well. So you know your base cost of employees, adding employee basically going to be offset by those two things even moving forward. Uh, now you know in future fiscal years there might be a year where you know we need to bump our equipment budget up a little bit like we did this year when we purchased the dump truck. Just because there's certain things that. You know, you know, are, are more expensive. Uh, but as a general rule, I think that would probably transition back to a normally the money level. So, um, so that's kind of the numbers and how we're trying to make it as budget neutral as possible. Um, 
I know there's always completely understand how an extra employee moving forward impacts future pay raises, future insurance increases. I completely mm -hmm. understand. But I really think moving forward, that's the best position for our staff, um, just because we are really having a hard time finding uh, seasonal staffing. Uh, we're basically hiring who, who applies. And that's we don't get any real any choice in the matter. Um, we just don't get a lot of applications. Um, that's getting more expensive too because counties are starting to pay. I mean, we pay twelve fifty an hour for our seasonal staff. Some counties are up to 16, 18 bucks an hour. So again, there's the competitive thing on what you can pay. So in reality, our if we keep seasonal staffing, our seasonal staffing numbers gonna have to start going up just. To even try to get to get applications, so that would be something to consider in the future budget years as well. Have you ever on seasonal staff instead of utilizing the prisoners out of their office space? We haven't. We've used them in the past for certain projects. Seasonal staffing, we use them. They work a lot of weekends, uh, nights, evenings. It's not a bad idea, but I don't know. And well, I think they for, for certain system. projects, yeah. Okay, like park cleaners and stuff like that. Yeah, we've used them for that stuff. So you're right now, so just I want to clarify you're yeah. paying your staff $12. And Seasonal milk is twelve dollars and forty cents. So that, and like I said, that's we're gonna have to start going up. We, we kind of try to keep that number consistent with kind of what some of the counties around us are paying because that's because that's kind of where your pool of employees are gonna come from. Um, you know. It's pretty hard to grab. I mean, we always advertise at the colleges, Iowa State, public colleges that have their rules and environmental programs. But it's hard. A lot of those programs have to do some sort of an internship, but it's hard for those kids to come to Carroll unless they have family or something to be sure about, you know, to rent an apartment or something for the summer, which is like there's many right now. I mean, 12 bucks an hour, 13 bucks an hour. So I, want to recap. Order, so. I want to recap this just to make sure I got it right. Yeah. So you want to remove your seasonal staffing. Correct. And if you did that, your budget overall ask goes up $719, correct? Well, that's my the overall ask down below will go up $161. Do you, so $161. Do you have that in your budget somewhere that you can come up with $161? Yeah. You don't have any. So, what I wanted to, before we get too much further into it, a little bit over. So, on the back side, what I did on the back side was for the requested column. I was with you. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't going I was like, where's he getting? Sorry. That's all right. My God. On the back side, the F FY25 objective. So, what I did here on my requested column, I took out the, the two salary adjustments, still leaving the employee in. If we take out the salary adjustments, still remove our seasonal staffing, still move the truck to next fiscal year. Um, Preliminary column would stay the same. There's no changes in there because we're doing 3.2% across the board. So if we look down onto my requested general basic deficit line, we'll go to 887, 823, and my preliminary column obviously would stay at 897, 85. So my requested column, if we do no salary adjustments, would be four thousand five hundred sixty-two dollars less. That's that's pretty good. Nice to check that soon. But still, I mean, like I said, I said in my original budget meeting, that was my budget. 
I'm not, I'm not trying to pursue opinions here on the board, but I will say, Jason, you have always gone to bat for your employees. And I remember, well, I remember two years, was it two years ago? Three. You, three years ago, you actually didn't take a pay increase yourself so you could give it to your staff. So I commend you for that. That's one heck of a leader. Um, I just wanted to make that known that he actually chose to take a zero to give it to the staff. Well, and it's your, your staff is what, what these things are on here. So, yeah, they sit here and do all this together and do that, but you know, you know it's the boots on the ground and get the stuff done. And if you don't have, if you don't have the quality of staff, that's, that's really a, that's what makes your department run well and make people want to come back and visit the parks when they're, you know, kept nights. And, and that's one of our reasons for wanting an employee versus a seasonal staff is it's hard for seasonal staff to really have a vested interest in what you're doing. Yeah. You know, your, your full time staff, you can hold with a higher standard, you can hold. And they'll we'll have that best interest in what you're trying to do. I mean, we've got the Navy shelter, we've got a lot of stuff, this building. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on the weekend, like if there's turnarounds in the shelter house or up here, Great Western Park, where you have a seasonal kid in the mornings coming on and there's you know, check it from the night before, get it ready for Saturday's rental, Sunday's rental, whatever. There's just a lot of stuff now with the new shelter house. The old shelter house didn't get the new stuff and new bathrooms and just the cabins. Uh, we just we upgraded a lot of facilities that you know the, the attention to detail and stuff you need to keep them functioning is something that you know, we just don't always get out of seasonal health. So that's that's kind of the main reason. Um I just a lot more reliability. So is it going to be a weekend position or is it going to be partially a couple weekends that we need to? Yeah. Also, I did make a note last week and uh, I'll say it again, the board, the conservation board that meets, there was only three there that's got a claim, but they did vote unanimously for the requested column, which is the directory of percent of hard five, remove seasonal, add full-time position. Um, and like I said, that's something you know down the road that that might that we always look at as a conservation board when we discuss salaries and stuff is keeping them competitive. So when we do have to hire, obviously they hire my position. So at some point, I am no longer here to have to replace me. Um, but in all of our positions, we don't have a lot of turnover, which is a good thing, but we do have some newer people coming on as people retire. So I think that goes well to maybe, you know, Carroll County and our department as a whole that we do retain and hold these fairly well. Some of that goes to how we pay them. It's board as well. So Departments to do so. I think I asked her in pre budget if you do, if you will hire this person, you do not need an extra vehicle for them, correct? It would not be, it would not be a law enforcement position, so there would be no need to take the truck home with them, right? There would be no, I mean, there would be some training involved, but not anything like sending us to the law enforcement academy. I just wanted to chance. I know there was some motions made last time, and, and I just wanted a chance to kind of explain just so everybody was kind of on the same page with how this is really impacting my budget and, and give you a chance to ask any questions. But if you're within here, but if he's defending his budget, but the sustainability of a full time man is what bothered me. They've taken thirty thousand out this year on a truck or the next year. Yeah, that's what once in a close. Everything's gonna be cost it. But I think it's like you gotta look at the campus is the point of the campus is my own. You can't get anybody that's 
Good. You got to look at two seasonal help, so get rid of basically three three interns and one seasonal health position. You know, yes, you're going to have insurance is always a lot of card, but pay as far as pay increases, you're going to have to start paying those seasonal people more too. So you're going to have four people that you're increasing salary on, and you're going to have one full. You know, I, I completely understand. I understand that's a budget decision moving forward, too. So I just try to make it as budget friendly as possible. And I guess I do what, what I think is the best for our department. We, we've been so you can get an employee for 43000 Oh, that's kind, of, that's kind of where we've been starting. So yeah, the last part of It's going to be nice weekends. Yeah. It's a lot for any level job, but yeah. Does anybody else have any more questions? No, I, I appreciate what you said earlier about the case, and I remember when you did that. That's the thing I hate about this part of it. But uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, you're kind of setting the bar to anything. Insurance, right? Not being interested. Oh, what? <clears throat> I, I can see his methodology. Oh, I 100% understand. understand. If he's presented it well, and this is a third time I've heard it because I might have had three budget votes. So, well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. All right, I have number five to review and discuss this with your 25 pound chief budget. The Courtney went ahead and set this all out. Um, I know pretty sure everybody has gone in and had extra conversations. I know there's a couple things. We can move um taking items or money from our nonprofits for kind of group partnership and a few other things from loss instead of general. But Courtney, do you want to kind of go over? Sure. <clears throat> so after the nonprofits and salaries were all set, insurance is decided I did a bunch of moving around because changed everything um so when i did that i was still concerned with what was in the rural fund um it just didn't have enough reserves at the end of the year to sustain itself until we start collecting taxes in september so i mean i just decided because we talked about lost money and i'm like well just for the sake of talking about it i put one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in lost money in the rural fund um, just to uh, bump up the reserves. I have a couple problems with that. Number one, it doesn't change the levy. So, I mean, usually when we use lost money, we're using it to lower the levy so the taxpayers get that benefit. When you put it in the rural fund just to bump the reserves up, it, it's not really giving anybody any That's all it does. <laughs> and the next thing is rural already gets half of it. You know, they're already getting half, and now they're getting some more. So those are my two concerns there. Um, I was thinking over the weekend, um, last year we had um, one of our sheriff's deputies, one of the, he's, not a, he's like a lieutenant, I think. Office deputy? No, the lieutenant deputy, yeah. Anyway, we he was always paid from the general fund, and last year we were kind of moving things around just to get things to work. You know, the rural fund, there was, or, I'm sorry, the general fund looks good, so we could possibly move that employee back and if I remember right, it was a round with benefits and everything just under $100,000. So we could do that if you guys wanted to do that. But that's just a little bit. So, you know, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, the other thing we were, you and I talked about was taking some money out of secondary rules property tax. And possibly, you could possibly um, refurbish it with lost dollars. You could, you could. Um, it kind of depends on what the board and the roads department can come to an agreement on. But obviously, if you reduce the ask from the rural fund, because there's really not a lot of expenses that come out of it. Like 2.8 is going to roads, and then the remainder of that is just our rural service deputies. So there's really not a lot of places to make cuts there, other than maybe possibly moving. Them to another fund, but 
Because I would like to see that 150 instead of going into the rural fund just to pump it. I'd like to see it go in the supplemental fund and actually lower our levy. Because that's kind of, that's what we've done in the past. That money was used to the tax relief. Because the rural already gets tax relief. And the urban. Well, Sam said we could take as much as we want. So oh, nice. Up to 300,000. No, I didn't ask that. I did ask that how much we could, you know, before the fact well, uh, road use tax, and it is a fair amount, so well, I don't expect Zach to be do that, but I would, if we can utilize some of Zach's, and if, if we have to, you know, like ship local option reads, well, we maybe talked, sell it back. And, yeah, we talked about $150,000 of lost money going to supplemental to lower the levy, and on that 40-acre tract of ground, it was saving $4. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, you do, you could put a little more in there too, you know. There's so it'd be 376. Mm -hmm. 150,000 would be 376 for you on that board. I'm not looking at that sheet, but okay. I'm sure your math's right. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I do want to also point out that that sheet I gave you that kind of shows the breakdown. It's kind of deceiving on the um, house because I did my own and mine increased about 90 bucks. So I think if any of the properties had, I think the one we're looking at had about a $23,000 increase on their value. And I think if I remember right, mine was around 80. So there's got to be somewhere in the middle there that if it didn't go up too much, your taxes will go down. But if it went up, significantly the taxes are going up. So this thing there it says, oh, it'll decrease on a house, that's just that particular home because mine went up about 90 bucks. Uh, $223,570. Yeah. So there again, I think that just goes to, if we can get any lost contributions, put it in supplemental just to lower the levy. And that, that'll help. Lowering the supplemental levy is going to help urban and rural. So you're not just helping one, you're helping all. Oh, and we can't really mess with the general and the rural levies because they've already reduced those. Well, it, it, you and I talk, we don't want to get that general levy any more than what they've got us at. Well, if we go because lower, the then they're going to cut it. Yeah. yeah. And we're all They're in essence making us be bad actors. Yes. You're right. But we can we can certainly lower it on the supplemental side because that's tax relief right there. So yeah. um, but that, that's the whole reason I thought. 150 was great, but not so great that it was going into the rural fund because they already get close to eight hundred thousand dollars a year anyway. Just their fifty percent. Yeah. Uh, so we take it all up. We'll go up. Uh, supplemental will affect both. Correct. Yeah. So they'll get some relief there, but you're giving everybody relief. Which and the other thing is, what big difference in, in the A? Because what you project here right now on that house, we're actually decreasing five dollars. And on the 40 acres, it's up $18. Mm -hmm. So the big problem we got there is that the, the, the big variable there is that the rollback is not similar. They're Correct. a lot, lot different. Well, and the value of the ag land was at $49,000 well, the years before. Too. So, yeah. I'm... You know, I... no, no. The thing is, uh, people look at their tax bill. They always look at think that everything is done on the county's back, and it's not. There's other, it legs, other legs that are involved in this thing that are going up a probably a lot drastic rate than what we are. We've been doing this long. Well, I can remember compare house and a forty. Yeah, That's and then commercial and obviously commercial changed quite a bit because it's not ninety ten anymore. That's what I thought. I was trying to get to Senator Saturday, but we do, and we are concerned because we watch this every year. Yeah. And there are times you're going to have to do some changes because of big projects or whatever, <clears throat> and things have changed in the last couple of years because of the debt service gap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, luckily, our debt service is super low. Sixty-five cents, isn't it? Yeah, and you know anybody that's ever jumped me about that, I said, well, they haven't borrowed money since they built the courthouse, so there's that. Um, and you they're all we're paying off now is is six in the jail. Yeah. And you got to remember another thing: there's nothing wrong with borrowing money. Because by borrowing money, 
people, the ones that are in TIF are also paying for this. Correct. Or otherwise, they're not paying it. Yeah. But I, I feel that that service levy has been not abused at all. Mm -hmm. It's only been utilized to pay for. I'm sure, it's been a lot of counties use debt service to buy equipment to sell that big. There are some counties that have to borrow money to buy a motor trailer. Yeah. So other than those changes, I basically put everybody's preliminary numbers in here. So by doing that, would we do would we do anything with your budget? Like if you decided to reduce the like moral asking. Like the general part of this. I don't think so, because the general fund. Um, so it's like less than 300,000. Oh, it'd have to be through some of it. Yeah, I think you want to do it on the rural side, just because the rural reserves is what I was concerned with, because it was only like $180,000. Well, it, that, that makes me nervous. I mean, you could watch it like a hawk, and if you needed to, you could put some money in there. And I'm OK with that, too. but. Yeah, we, don't we don't ever leave it that low. Usually it's right around that three, two, two and a half to three hundred thousand that gets left in there as reserves. I mean, you don't know. I mean, the sheriff's one of the sheriff's deputies could, I don't know, your insurance will cover that, but you just never know. It's nice to have, you know, how big of a cushion, that's your guys' decision. But I just was going off kind of past past amounts. What did you 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 moved to 150? Mm -hmm. And there's still how much in the so what that 150 wasn't to lower the levy, it was to increase the reserve. Increase the reserve. reserve. Yeah. So there was no which I don't like yeah. as a taxpayer. <laughs> well, there's no direct correlation. No. Um which is and um looking at the loss by <laughs> Estimating at the end of this year, there'll be about $1.1 million in there, which is um, pretty significant money in my book. Um, and part of that's going to be for the HVAC. Well, we've already taken that out because um, we did a good job of making sure there was money in there because we knew that project was going to be more than our but money. Um, but we estimated collecting around $770,000 to $800,000 cost. And then we have some small revenue coming in from Maple River and Mount Carmel paying back their loans. With 150, and then there's some other things that are coming out of loss next budget year. I think the surplus from that year was going to be around $300,000. So if you didn't spend any of the previous reserves, you'd be at like a $1.4 million, which is LB, yeah. I think. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to use 150, you could use 300 if you wanted to. Use a million. I mean, there's the money's there. Um, it's just how you know how you want to go, I guess. Because right now the supplemental levies at uh, it's on the page. Yep, that's it. Almost 80 cents. So and that is up from last year, so so we 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 going to do any more with it. Well, it, I feel like the bad guy when we talk about this. Sorry. No, I know. You guys would need to decide if you're going to fully fund the two point eight, and if not how much and then we could just adjust the numbers and he would have to adjust his um, numbers too. What we talked about with the point I know she said well we could take out of the what he gets out of the general no we can't do that. I, never mind. But I, we won't screw what, what does he get out of the general? It's three hundred thousand uh, two eighty nine. Two eighty five, yeah. Well we can't screw the general because then it changes the letter right. general. It's got to be the supplemental order rule. Yeah, and the general, the reserves in the general are fine. They're actually maybe just a stitch higher, but um, that may change if you guys do anything with us. Well, I wouldn't this year anyway. But. So, right now, the urban, the rural levy is going up. I'm just going to round for easy math about 22 cents. And then the, oh, 
Let me backtrack. The urban levies going up about 22 cents and the rural is going up about 15 cents as, as it sits right now. Well, we took our, I mean, a big, the big thing was our insurance on the building and our liability vehicles. You guys all know, well, we budgeted for like a 25% increase and we still had to pull 90 grand out of reserve just to pay our insurance bill. Yeah. So I mean, that's, that's significant, mm -hmm. especially in a fund that there's really not a lot going on in. Um, supplemental pays the FICA and IPERS for some service area one employees mainly the uh, ambulance, attorney, jail, and sheriff's office, and then it pays elections, and that's it. And now we have you know, our insurance coming out of there, but... But the supplement is let me add or let So any tax relief you can give there will be coming by. That's a magic number. Well, we know 150 changed the rural by four bucks. Yeah. This last year, we did 300,000. We did 150 in the supplemental and 150 in the general fund. But that makes the conversation any easier. So last year was $300,000. I think we need to move it to $300,000. Right. Into 150 supplemental. All of it to supplemental. Help by all of us. You want to 150 of it to make sure bring your bills up, right? Pretty good. Sure, you move that. Or this is proposed with 150 in that. Yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, the 150 right now is coming in a, it's actually going into the rural fund. Yeah. Well, so, we leave that alone, right? We can. Yeah. If then, you want to, if you want to fully fund the secondary roads 2.8. You leave that 150 there, but then you do 150 in supplemental because you're talking 300 total. Uh, it's would, kind of two conversations. Yeah, how much would the 150 one in supplemental help the rural and would it be? Um, Gene and I did it, it was about four bucks. Four bucks, not that way. Well, that takes it from 380 to 376, right? Yeah. Uh, and if we look at increase of 60, if we took another 200,000, that would affect our that'd be basically use up all our current 2025 flow up. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. leaves us all that other stuff for reserve. Mm -hmm. so that's why I'm thinking we need to move 300,000, and that would take care of it. Also, decrease urban a little bit more and rural. Okay. So you're proposing 300,000 in the supplemental to lower the levy. What about the 150 we have? In the that's really good. No, but my question is, is it 300 above the 150 or is yeah. it 150, 150? So, 150? so I'm, I'm getting it. That would basically. So you're saying 454 is in here. Because you got 150, right? We're going to 300, that's basically take use of our global option for the year. Yeah. My only concern was when I did that is, We've always used it to lower the levy. This year, if you, if you leave the 150 in the rule, you're not well, using it to lower the levy, the you're only, using it to buff up reserves. Well, the only thing we could do is to take lower his 150,000 and then give him 150,000 local option. Yeah, that's the same thing. I think. So wait, so <laughs> yeah. That would lower the. That... No, because when you talk about the rural fund, the 150 is not lowering the levy because the levy is staying at its max. Max. And the levy at its max is not enough to see the Does he have any come out of supplemental? No. No, he has his own fund. Okay, you're supposed to have that in some. Um, so, I mean, I could, if you want, I can run the numbers of what it would look like to move that um, employee I talked about at the beginning that was always a general fund employee. We could look at moving him back to general basic to so see how that would change. Yeah, because we would not have to increase the levy in order to do that. 
on any, you know, and it would bump up the rural and income balance a little bit. Yeah, that that's the only reason I put it in there is because we're going to have to do something. I mean, um, You have time for a comment? Yep. You know, I'm actually here to support your efforts in reducing expenditures in any department that I witnessed last week, and I urge you to continue to do that. Maybe not be done. You know, I, I told I forewarned Gene. I saw him Saturday at the legislative forum. Saw Scott there. Where were the rest of you three guys? That's a great place to meet with your constituents. You have kids, you're at Hoop It Up. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I had kids once. Um, but I, you know, Gene Gene made a good point to those legislators in defending the county, and. <laughs> My observation from that is, is to my friend, you know, they, they say that party politics don't play in county yet. I mean, it's an example where they do is Gene defends the county. And I'm here, as I hope any conservative would be, to defend the taxpayer. The county's the county. But the taxpayers, people who make up the county. Okay. My taxes. I confirmed this with Courtney last week on my house, and I'm just one guy, but in doing some math with several other people, my taxes are going up 13%. So House File 718 didn't do enough, in my opinion. 13%. You know, we got to come up with it somewhere, right? 13% from when? From last year. Okay. One year. That's city school. And no, no, no. That's kind of. I got to address the city tonight, and I'll. God forbid what's going to happen at schools, you know. But give you a little bit of history. Since fiscal year twelve, yeah, fiscal year thirteen, actually. Sorry. Taxes have gone up. 43.8% county taxes. That's 4.38 per year. And in looking at the cumulative rate of inflation with U.S. Department of Statistics, which is a little over 30%. So county taxes have exceeded the rate of inflation despite the last couple of years by 43%. That's why I actually move up. Now, to Courtney's earlier comment, this is the best illustration they've ever came up with. This is, and this is wonderful to give you a historical understanding of what taxes have done. But I started predicting this two years ago. You guys might remember it. It was certainly a big thing when I ran my campaign for mayor. We all knew, knew this thing was coming. We had a two year, actually a three year head start to know what valuations would do and how if we didn't uh, if we didn't lower the levy we we're going to face one of the highest tax increases we've ever faced and certainly within recent history as is the case as presented okay so by not lowering that levy even with the effects of the increase in rollback i just told you my house is 13% don't feel sorry for me feel sorry for this person this person's goes up 20% because that $223,000 house from fiscal year 12, 13, 14, and so on, up until last year was a $223,000. Now it's a $272,000 house. And that's using the auditors or the assessors numbers, not mine, 22% in the letter that was dated March 1st. And now with that levy as presented at 49050, and, and I, I presume that's the entire levy, right? That's everything. Getting the brutal. The 49, yes. four point, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the urban right, levy. Right, right. Yeah, the urban levy, but includes all your supplemental and everything. Yes. Debt service and so on and so forth. 
Thank you. Um, but that's an increase of 20.8%. It's staggering. And going back to the cuts, you're asking departments to cut their expenditures. And we're not setting a very good example by not cutting our money. It starts here. You need to be the example as the leaders of the county, as the supervisors, approving the budget and approving what levy goes into place. Last week, you thought it was okay at 3.2% raise for yourself. <laughs> to me, that is just, you just had a gentleman there who took a pay cut or a pay freeze to pay his people. Wonderful. What an example. We didn't follow that. We thought it was a great idea, but we didn't follow that. Guys, I mean, we're $36,000 a year now. This is staggering. I think it was said last week that the salary rank is 58 out of 99, which I did confirm. Carroll County. I can confirm that for you right here. 58 of 99. If you're looking at the same thing I am. I took it out of the high state. We're, we're ranked 32nd in population or 58th. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Which looks good initially. But hold on a second. 53 of those 99 counties have three supervisors. I'm not advocating for three supervisors. I once did, but I, I think it would be a bad idea. The other, by the way, you might want to look into this. It shows you guys as full time. But that's just, you're in the full time column. But, anyways, that's beside the point. But if you figure 53 of those 99 counties, 54% of them have only just three supervisors. If you look at the total tax ask that five supervisors at a 58 rank versus what the three do at any other rank, I come up with the median, okay, the median ask about 3.89 is significantly lower than that. It raises you up to about the top 20. I'm not here to talk about job performance, whether it's due, whether it's worth it, whether it's not. We can all, the one thing that I think we can all agree on is it's the best paying part-time job in the county. I would also argue it's probably the best job in the county. I know it's tough this time of the year. I know it's tough come compensation board time of the year. But the time to cut budgets is not in this 60-day period. It's 365 days a year. And some of the decisions that we have made that led us up to this point by growing the county, adding positions, so on and so forth, is why you're in a pinch that you are today. And it's like, now we got to figure it out. Yeah. But, you know, that's a, uh, including IPERS, that's about a $6,000 gift right there. I know how you voted. I know how you voted, but you three guys didn't blink at 3.2%. And I just urge you to just really put it into proper perspective. And someone said, well, we won't have anybody run for these positions again. You got to keep it attractive. Someone was me. Yeah. Stephanie, we had four people run for seven positions at, at school board, and they paid Zippo. I, I say BS on that. I understand there's three guys running just for the for the seat that she may vacate. So in a perfect world, I suggest you cut yourselves, but at the very minimum, freeze it. And I'm gonna we're talking budget right now. I got the floor. I want to talk about a couple things, but 
this is your meeting, but I'd like to talk to you a little bit at some point about how you're making motions and the concerns that I've got with um, when, when it's appropriate, whenever you want. I mean, I'll do it right and it take all the five seconds. But, um, and then, you know, a little bit more about how subcommittees are going. But um, thanks for getting this back on the, the watch list. Um, I'd like to see minutes of subcommittee posted on the website at some point, too. When you say subcommittee, you yeah, subcommittees like uh, conservation, like uh, no more help puts theirs on there. Yeah, um, there. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like I think you can ambulance board, ambulance board, ambulance board child care, RSVP, any any subcommittees that these guys are going to, you know, um, they used to be available, but that was back with the old website, and maybe just thought it was useless, but. Let me just talk if, if, if you don't want to. One more minute so we can continue on our meeting, please. Yeah. Uh, you want me to or don't want me to? You can have one more minute. Yeah. The, the motions, when you guys are going through these line items, you know, like you did last week, and you kind of had your discussion and so on. So, and, you know, the, these guys might be, some were in favor, some were, they kind of went around the table and how y'all, but when you say, well, well, we don't have to make a decision now, but we'll have to make a decision eventually. But my concern with that is, Stephanie, is that, and I don't expect everybody to get their way, but you don't get a chance to individually vote on your position on that different line item. What you're forcing people to do is to vote on the whole budget, okay? What, and, what, and it could put someone in an awkward position. Well, I didn't get along, or I didn't agree with these items there, but am I gonna vote against the entire budget as a result of that? I think it makes perfect sense, but, and we used to do it that way, where you say, all right, um, uh, CADC, make a decision, boom, done, motions, second, done, that's in your budget now, okay? You mean vote, vote, care, vote, vote on that. Individual okay. items, whereas say, well, we don't have to make a decision now, you know? I mean, at some point, you got to make a decision, but when you lump them all together, that places a person in a pretty awkward position to say, well, now am I not going to support the entire budget as a result of that? You, you, you had suggested that to, well, we don't have to make a decision now. Well, I think we, yeah. So she had something to put in her budget that we, we could put it in there and get some figures yep. of where so, we're at, and then we go back and vote on it. I think that's so we really need to lower. Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to have that. Will you, will you vote on them line item by line item or as the total budget? Yeah, to be able to get me to that. I think, I, we, I think we've, we've done, done it both ways. We've done it both ways. We've done a couple of years, I think. I mean, I understand. I'm just witnessing what I saw last week. And yeah, the week I think we're doing that just so she had some numbers to work with. But I, I get where you're coming from. I hope so. Yeah. No, I do. I understand. Um, I mean, I'll take critiquing as much as possible. I mean, yeah, we're, all, we're all here to learn. Oh. And I don't have a problem putting it on the agenda and just going down and voting on it. It's in the minutes now, what was you know discussed, but if we need motions on that, it was every individual one. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, people would never be able to historically say, hey, how did that turn out? Well, what? On your, since 2012, you're saying your property tax went up 40 some percent, right? Mm -hmm. Was it slow, gradual to the last couple oh, of years? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, um, but, but I feel like this is my input on that. I feel like they didn't do a new assessment for how many years? 25. 25 years. So that, that to me is a huge part of that. I think it would change a little bit drastically there because it just changed, what, two years ago or did it last year? This would be the first fiscal year 25 would be the first it's in effect. Yes, I agree with but you. Right. That, 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 uh, that does a little bit of it, right? Well, you also had you had statewide equalizations that went along about every two years that would gradually bump some of it up, so it wasn't all at once. But the point that I'm really trying to stress here is don't go blaming valuations on a tax increase. No, that I, I drives me nuts. No, I 100 percent understand, but I'm saying it would have it would have changed a little bit drastically in, in that it wouldn't have been just gradual, gradual, <laughs> gradual, right? I mean, if your house is worth 200, but actually it was worth 250, right? It would have changed in earlier. Well, you're, you're, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, I think I think we're splitting hairs, but talking about the same thing at the same time. Yeah. It, it, it didn't all happen. This 43% didn't happen all at once. It happened over 10 years. Okay. And so it didn't happen all at once. Certainly the largest increase in valuation certainly did this year. Again, you had statewide equalization orders that would keep it kind of keep coming up all along, but the, the highest valuation increase is clearly this year. This year. Did that answer your question? Absolutely. Mark, I'm to address one thing. You talk about our wages here, that we don't do that. But in the past, I would say that supervisors over, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, using what I hypothetically think, supervisors over 50% of the time has reduced their, wage, their wages, what their request, what their, what their recommendation by the comp board was, or cut them down to zero. So I don't think that you can blame the supervisors that they have not held the right Okay. I mean, yes. They, well, we uh, four years ago, I know we did zero. Uh, three years ago, I think we did um, less. Than the the comp board sometimes makes ours less anyway. And, and I'm trying to find I'm, I'm like, my point this year is that what recommend, problem recommendation is because this is the first time since I've been on it. That we had a recommendation that made sense that was equal across the board. It wasn't as high on those that we had a fighting argument over. Okay. Trying to make a point to the comp board. This is what we want. Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. But here's here's a statistic for you. 20 fiscal year 2016, supervisors were paid 27,590. 2024, 36,092. That's an 85,02 increase or 30.8% or 3.8% per year. And the average, again, back to the average rate of inflation at 3.08. So it's it's increased beyond the rate of inflation too, despite those efforts, Gene. Well, well, back back what I was clear. I'll tell you what I told them. You get what you pay for. Is it just the supervisor raises that are you referring to the nonprofits as well? Nonprofits? I didn't do any calculations on nonprofits, but I'd be glad to do so. The supervisors raised this year will impact the budget five thousand seven hundred and seventy four dollars and seventy two cents. Including IPERS? I just went off of the same numbers that you utilize, and I did a 3.2%. So, no, it would not include either. No. So, let's just say About six grand. Yeah. Like I said. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank Thanks you for your time, Mark. Thank you, Mike. All right. The next yeah, item is wait, well, wait, actually, wait, I need to know what you want me to do. Um, And you know, I mean, we can cert we're not gonna set like our first hearing for what is it, next week or two weeks, but um, thank you. And I can put numbers in and see what it looks like. I mean you're thinking up to four hundred and fifty thousand one into the supplemental. One hundred and fifty and then Gene mentioned three hundred. Um Right now, I'm more concerned. Like, what are we going to do with the rule? Right now, I have one hundred fifty thousand dollars of lost money in there that I don't. Think that's I think that should be in supplemental. But so, where do we, what do we want to do on the rural side to make the reserves a little bit better? So, if we move, will that do anything? I can. That's uh, it, 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 it'd be yeah, that'd be close. So, if you want, I can move the lieutenant back to general. That's not going to increase the levy on the general or the supplemental side, and it will boost up the rural. We could take the lost money that's going in there and put it in supplemental. But I, I guess. So what are you going to do about your bending bell? Well, I think if you put, you know, I'm only I have 150 going in there now. The balance looks good. If you put, you know, you take a hundred dollars, hundred thousand dollars of expenses out of there, I think. I mean, that's pretty close. Um, 
And then if you want to just get rid of the 150 in the rural and put it in supplemental, and then like I said, this year we used three hundred thousand dollars. Do you want to use just a little bit more this year? So you're taking that hundred thousand expenses and you're saying it's like secondary roads take a hundred thousand more. That's what you're saying? No, I'm saying that there's a rural deputy that was oh, always paid okay, for general, and we can put him back to the general fund. Yeah, that that won't increase any levies, but it will increase the reserves in the rural fund, which is what we're trying to do. Okay, I guess I we're, I guess we're trying to do two things. One is to increase the rural reserve so we have some money in there at the end of the year. And the other is to lower the levy. So I'd like to see, you know, the lower, I mean, let's get the levy lowered. So, so right move, now we got 150. Tom, move Tom and put 450 in the supplement. Out of the flow clock. That one? We're gonna have to bring them back to the nonprofits and just do a freeze on all of them. Forget it. I don't know. Well, so we already lowered below. We don't keep, keep going. No, but I'm just saying the freeze. Well, that makes the problem. No, but a freeze would give them more than we agreed to. Depends on where they're getting yeah. paid out of. <laughs> if they're getting paid well, out of the so those, those figures that we're talking about ain't gonna change at a levy rate. My well, $150,000 changed it. Yeah, four yeah, bucks. Four well, I shouldn't say the levy. It would change, change it. property tax dollars about four hundred. Do they think they think it's going to be urban? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I could put in um, the deputy back in the general where he used to come out of, and then um, do the four fifty into supplemental. Right. That'll lower the levy, and we can look and see what that looks like. I agree. Good start to come up with the, the best accurate looking into the future of work. I mean, moving the money around, I'm still thinking spending less is better. I don't, I mean, I don't know how. We've, we've done this for years. And we'll, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that's not the best place to put if we just next year if you want to save money you don't spend as much money i we have this game well and in the past we have went through everybody's budgets and made some adjustments last year we did huh? yeah, yeah we did this year really well, we, we got some people that are upset but yeah right boy that happens but, and maybe some departments don't need to have certain positions. Maybe we don't need to fill positions in departments or decrease from a certain number of employees down the page. Thank you guys. I'm going to allow the board to make that as the decision. I think we want to go back through every department or try to or and uh, you know, what are we going to do? Is that what Jason did? I was like, oh, you're good with that. I don't think you're going to fit out. It's not really an action item. It's, 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 actually, it's actually just shuffling stuff around in the budget and make it work. But we still have to sustain it. Well, it's my understanding. I understand. And not wanting three part time help that you can't count on and that don't have to wear a full time Carroll County Conservation Bath. <laughs> And I personally feel comfortable going back to the nonprofits before we start going back to the departments. I don't know if that's an option, but I think, yeah, I think we did. I think we went we through pretty, pretty good, good on the nonprofits. I think there's a couple departments that, um, yeah. My concern is so, you know, with House File 718, they automatically reduced our rural and our general levy. When you start making cuts, you know, we get an increase next year and they reduce our levy again. You know, I feel like they're, they're almost forcing you to keep it where it is. You know what I mean? Like, they could be a bad average. Well, I mean, because if you could lower it knowing full well that next year, if 
you know, you had a, a major purchase or something like that, you could increase it a little bit if you needed to. But I'm afraid if we go lower, Unjust. then we get a reduction again next year, and then it's going to be even lower. Yeah. And I know eventually this all goes away after however many years it is, but. And, you know, maybe going down a little bit is not a big deal. But, yeah, like you said, I feel like they're forcing you to keep it at the reduced level they gave you. Because it's still under the max. And, you know, because if you do start making cuts in other departments, the problem is, is the majority of our departments come from the general fund. There's very few that come from supplemental, which is the levy that we're trying to lower. But, so let's start with moving Tom, move Tom, and then, then 450 into the second one. Is that a motion? Does it need to be a motion? Because these are just calculating. All we're doing is giving you numbers motion. to figure. Okay, I'll put it in the minutes that that's what we're going to okay. do, and then we're going to review. And then we'll have new numbers again. Can we do a scenario where we do that? And freeze just a scenario. The um, actually, I, oh, freeze the nonprofit. I well, the nonprofit is freeze the nonprofit's yeah. already yeah. broke, and we went below. Right? Mm -hmm. We went thirty-four thousand dollars. We knocked off of last year's or last year's. I yeah. agree with Mike. We probably hit that. Oh, we hit them harder than you ever have. My opinion. Okay, then I don't understand the median of the You don't understand that. Well, a lot of them remain the same. No, they all got decreases. Right, they got decreases. We added that one. The 1,000. Okay, so. Okay, I don't know. I can do whatever you need me to do. It's just. It... <laughs> Courtney, would you please um, move Deputy Tom? And add or and run the numbers on putting four hundred and fifty thousand dollars into the supplemental fund from local option sales for us to see how it affects the rural and urban places. So we can start there. That was just an ask from Scott. It's not. It's not, not a motion. I agree, and I agree with that. And then and I hear to... what you're saying. That they're gonna. Yeah. We gotta be careful. We don't get that general and that rural funds down less than what they're agreed. They're wanting us to be at now. So I, I agree with you. Next year we're gonna. <laughs> we'll well, I mean, and I don't care if we do that. The thing is, is we, there are gonna have to be yeah. hard decisions made. Well, it's gonna get to the point we're gonna decide what. Some uh, programs we're going to have to limit. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, and then, and then we're going to stand here. Who's who front door we're going to stand on first? Because three dollars and fifty cents used to be the max, but now we're at three point four seven because they lowered it, and then they lowered the rural one too. Oh, yeah. Why don't you start with that discussion that the request that Scott had to bring it back again next week, and then we start if we need to. We were on some other numbers. And um, I got another question. Unless you guys want to do just a workshop and not have it. Um, I'll still be open. Maybe. I know yeah, it'll be open, but I might be a, a, okay with that because we're getting to a point where we need to set that date. And that I always liked it when you set that date. The numbers that you're going to talk about at that open meeting are what you're going to do. Exactly. Obviously, you can lower them after that, but it's really nice to be as close as you can, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, I don't know if you're talking about budget, but <laughs> so in the general fund, we talked about not really wanting to mess with that levy because they've already lowered it for us. Last year, we took our insurance out of supplemental, our building insurance, vehicle insurance, work, workers' comp, all of it was coming out of supplemental. The proposed general fund ending balance is $1.3 million, which to me is a little high. I think it should be um, based on past history, right or wrong, it's usually been around 900 to. So what do you guys think of maybe moving the insurance 
back out of supplemental and putting it in the general fund again. And then that'll lower that 1.3 and it'll also lower the supplemental. And it won't affect our levy on the general. It won't affect the general levy. It'll affect the supplemental levy because we're taking a bit of out of there. And I think I have like 400 and some thousand dollars budgeted in the supplemental fund. So if you did that, if you did 450, I did like 400,000 of insurance. That's 800,000 dollars. Just wanted to throw that out there. Because we're asking for 1.3 million in the supplemental fund. So if you lower that, then I think, and I'm just kind of looking at the numbers, I think your levy would be actually less. But I think it's a bad idea. Okay. The only thing is, is you get your reserves down to that $900,000 rate, and I know that seems like a ton of money, but everything comes out of the general fund. Yeah. You need to, we need to be careful with budget amendments. Like people coming in saying, well, we decided to fix this this year. No. You know, I think we need to have that discussion yeah. now. The answer is no. Because there's a lot of things that people are going to put stuff in that they don't need. They're going to levy and mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of watch the expenditures come June. I hate it. The whole month of June, all the race spend in the budget. Um, and then we'll know where we need to. You know, I've always, when people have asked me, I don't know what to put in for insurance. And I've always said, but in a single, like you hire somebody that's a family and there's more expenses. The board has always not had a problem with that, you know, giving a department money to cover the benefit of somebody. But yeah, you don't over budget just in case. There's, there's, there's expenses that show up that have to be taken care of too, that we got to be careful. Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah, there's something you can put off. Like our property tax, we had to do a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. our property insurance. Property. Yeah. Mark's yeah. got the same word property tax now. I'll make property insurance. No, I brought that on Saturday. So, are you, oh, are you okay with if I put, um, then just to see what the numbers look like, I'm okay take the I'm insurance, like put it in the yeah. general fund, look to see what our reserves look like in the general fund, and then. Look at what our money looks like. Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, you can always adjust that $450,000 a lot. It, like I said, last year we used 300000 So, um, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Real quick comment on that. Historically, we've always had very healthy reserves arguably a little on the long side, which means we're overtaxing, but it does benefit your bond rating to have those healthy reserves, unless, which is moot, unless you're planning to borrow it. We're not borrowing anymore, so we don't more capital property. So <laughs> now you know where I'm going. You say that now. It also presents itself, so when there's opportunity to come up, that you can take advantage of and I'm going back to when my days as a mayor, we were able to pay off a loan and we were not able to borrow or ask for it, but we happen to have the money there to build a tower and we just ship stuff around by having that money there. We're able to do that. We used that to pay off the sewer loan at 75 cents of a dollar. I don't know how many years in the past for the big savings. We were not able to do that unless we had it. So there is some opportunity in our shut roads. So yeah, by doing the insurance, you lower the general fund down to probably in that eight to nine hundred thousand dollar range versus the one point three. <laughs> Maybe you do part of it. You get two. Well, the thing is, we don't know. Like you we're we're guessing what the balances are going to be at the end of the year, all that stuff. So to me, you you could budget to get. Get it four hundred fifty thousand. Um, you could budget for the insurance to be what it is, but it may not be. You may have ended up ended at the end of the year with more in your reserves than what you thought, which kind of is the trend. Usually, there is a little bit more money in there than what you budget on. Because you're budgeting to spend every single penny, and you don't ever do that. So it seems like eighty to ninety, or eight hundred to nine hundred, kind of low, but 
seems huge from the outside looking in from yeah. Mark's chair. It's huge. Yeah, but um, oh. I'm not maybe we do maybe we do the insurance, but not Tom. Or maybe we do Tom and not the insurance. You know, I mean, is the magic number for you guys going to be what our levy looks like, or is your is the reserves going to play into that to kind of see where we're at in those funds? So it won't keep happen to me. It's well, me too. I mean, I worry about the money being in there um, in order for the expenditures to be paid. So I got a couple different, like what three or four different. Yeah, I'm different every month. That's always fun. Okay. Even though it's not a motion, I second that. <laughs> what about Tom's grade? What are you doing there? It needs to be a justification for I get it, but sustainability is still an animal. Right. They are they are sometimes the face of the county, but I mean we call everybody else to three. How will that be defined? Well, no, of course she gets it in our right. I don't think we use that as we quest for her. The numbers in our budget now are the preliminary three point two. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a motion on that just so we're all because I know there's some different opinions. So we can work with that. Do you guys are wanting to go back to item discussion number four and motion? Actually, it says discussion. Let's hold it off and put it on next week. Okay. 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 Well, it doesn't say decision, and I don't want to mess up the agenda any more than what I already do. Um, I'm going to go to item number six, manure management annual updates, Twin Rivers Work, section 22, Acadia Township. Let's see. No changes. PI 235, finisher, section 5, Wheat Money Township. Added acres, change crop rotation, or optimum yields. We can go to committee reports. Last week, Tuesday, Gene and I went to CCGP, Western Island Networks. Um, Tuesday, also, Mr. the Prisoners, Courtney, that I think under Emily's direction. Yep, Emily, I, Jesse probably helps too, but they yeah. they got what we needed to be moved to. So. There they're gone. Wednesday, I had the last scheduled every three week meeting for the baiting SEH discussion because right now there's not a whole lot going on. Thursday, um, rescheduled Iowa Prison Industries for March 22nd at 7 a.m. And I think everybody put an kind of email on that one. Friday, I went to Secondary Roads and worked on the bills and claims. And this week, unless Gene adds annual with union negotiations, all I have is Wednesday night comprehensive plans here. Okay. I'll go. Um, let's see, last week I had the daycare, emergency management. Safety meeting, sensors meeting that we had, and this week I have hazmat, Fort Dodge, and then we'll see if we have a meeting with Franklin County regarding the environmental contract. Back to the safety committee. Um, what was the secondary of the road out here on your agenda? That conservation road. We were just talking about the, the complaint that was. I'm closing the road. Okay, not a safety concern necessarily, <laughs> but maybe it, indirectly. In, it, just because they usually close it because of safety. Yeah. Okay, so correct. Okay. Yeah. That's all we talked about. Oh, I just saw it on your agenda. Thank yeah. You. It was a good meeting. Last week I had uh, Tuesday, newspaper and radio. Uh, Friday I joined the assessor budget discussion here at noon. That's my according to all of us for the conference points. This week I have Thursday or Friday, we were meeting with this on the Harper County Environmental Services. 
with the CCGB board meeting, uh, there was a lot of talk in regard to uh, uh, Jody Cunningham for Hub 712. Um, some updates on Highway 30. Uh, there was a lot of discussion in regard to the budget meetings between the city and the county that talked about and talked about doing, doing, uh, doing more reporting for the city and the county. And then, uh, uh, let's see, Friday I had conference board and Saturday was the legislative forum. They don't mean to put me, sorry. I spilled my gut that was the legislative forum. And then Wednesday, uh, I have Rolling Hills board meeting. Thursday, I have a new opportunity for me. And then last week, I also did a lot of uh, discussion with the uh, of by Zach and stuff in regard to budget and prediction. But, then we'll see once we put the uh, meetings back on board here. We have to wrap that up. Last week, the assessors meeting. Um, I don't know if I should start printing off every email that I do or how we want to go about this. Do we need? Um, and then I also went through the courthouse and did a walkthrough to check on construction. The ceilings are looking really, really nice. Perfect. Yeah. And then I did attend the Hoop It Up. It's a Carol City of Carroll function. Um, it was ran really well. That's all I got. This week I don't have much because I have another function. Okay. Um, well, just for the record on Saturday, not that it, yeah, I was the uh, flat Republican platform chair um, over in Crawford County for this good board. Should we write that down? Yeah. Okay. Platform chair. And I was there from 10 in the morning until 11 at night. Hey, that's like an election day. <laughs> that's, uh, where, that's where I was. <laughs> so on, on me, you had Tuesday had policy council meeting too. Okay. Uh, based on two uh, broad recordings on uh, human resource policy procedures and also the selection criteria process to approve that. And uh, okay. thanks, Bob. Yes, thank you. That's cool. That's cool. And no reason he was here to hear that. Next week, I just have that um, put on there about the conservation. And then um, I'll probably have a budget discussion on there again next week. And I'm not sure if next week's the day I wanted to set a public hearing for that first hearing week, not when we present what we're proposing. You need a 10 day notice for that? Yeah. <laughs> we continue for your memory, but uh, environmental services services on there. If we do meet, there's there. Yeah, oh, just let me just shoot yeah, me an email. You know, know. Yeah. On my, I'll just write it down. Write it down, and then because they may have to take it to their board, which means yes. next. Might have to wait another yeah. one, but okay. I don't really have anything to ask you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, okay. Any more discussion? Not all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.